Conmary method of hiding. So Marie Kondo, of course, is a very famous uh, Japanese hiding consultant. And we're going to go in depth on the difference between tidying and cleaning. And there are two very distinct uh, words considered. Okay, so starting off, for those uh, on the tidying journey, first, uh, Marie Kondo would like for you to visualize what you want. And this is the most important step. So sorry for getting into this so quickly, but what do they do? What kind of lifestyle do you want? And it says that right here, ideal lifestyle. And she encouraged people to really think about what is the life that they would want to have and picture it in their imagination, even though it's not reality yet, because it can too become reality. Next. The question of what you want to own is actually the question of how you want to live your life. Now, what the Conmary method does for you? The first step, of course, visualizing your life, the dream life you want to live. And some people may think that the Marie Kondo method is purely all like, it's just decluttering and discarding. But really, the Marie Kondo method is really more of a lifestyle choice. And it's about this question, how do you want to live your life as you move forward in the world? It's also tied somewhat to your goals in that sense. So to visualize your ideal lifestyle. As I said, it's not simply to discard or throw away items. That's not the whole purpose of it. The purpose of tidying, however, is to reach the life that gives you happiness and peace. It does sound very new agey and self help -y like However, it is a very true statement that the whole reason for it is to spark joy in your own life. And that varies from person to person and can vary for your own life too. The tidying by category. And all right, so this tidying by category, tidying should be done by categories laid out in the open. This is something, well, that Marie Kondo um, would like to more, the, the tidying by category. Basically, the problem of most decluttering uh, campaigns or projects spring cleaning in people's homes, usually people's mindsets go by, oh, let's just clean a little of every room every day, or let's just focus on a certain area and keep that tidy. The problem with this is that this strategy of cleaning only certain areas, it's not very sustainable. It's not long-term. It doesn't take into account all of the items that one has um, in a specific category. And when I mean that, so for example, let's say bathroom towels or general bathroom things. Like, you'd be surprised if you live in a house it's a bit cluttered that if you tidy up your bathroom, sure, you declutter some stuff, throw away some stuff. But you throw away some stuff and you realize there's more bathroom supplies outside the bathroom than in the bathroom. And this is where Marie Kondo tells people to, oh my gosh, all right. 
for this slide, the tidying campaign. Let me just finish. This is where Marie Kondo tells, would tell people to tidy up more on the category and more on the sort of, what do you call, how do you categorize things? And this actually goes back to, let's say, the foundations of philosophy. For all of those who are interested in philosophy, where I think it was either Aristotle or Socrates, who, one of those the big three Greek philosophers that categorized everything in nature. And so Mario Kondo strives to do the same. And it's a principle of organization, the tidy in categories laid out in the open. All right, the tidying campaign. So let's break down this phrase, tidy. So tidy is the word used to describe the process of number one, discarding, number two, organizing. And the order is also important because the point of tidying is to, as we said, and a lot of things you realize if you go through the process, you don't spark joy. And this is where the discarding comes in. You want to reduce so that when you organize, when you manage your things, it becomes much, much easier to say, organize them, all right? And the next would be a campaign. So what is a campaign? So like a war campaign, something like that. A campaign is a period where one does studying in one fell swoop. And it should take no longer than six months to complete this. All right, so I go to this slide. Why you just clean the things or clean by area doesn't work. Discarding is a must. So if discarding is not done, then the amount of items that are in the certain space will take the space needed to clean certain spaces. A bit confusing wording, but what this really means is you can't tidy without discarding. You can't fully, let's say, clean your house without discarding. It's an essential process that you have to do. But don't worry, there's a, a positive side to discarding. So it's not all soulless throwing away of things. Next is areas. One has to follow the five step process of category. It is a thorough counting of which items belong to which category and of which sparks the most joy. So as I said a while ago, One person would need to follow that the clean by area. It's a misconception. It's a myth. It doesn't work. It really doesn't work if your goal is tidying as defined by Marie Kondo. Um, you want to find which sparks the most joy when you tidy by category. I think we'll get into that later. And here is a general principle. And for those more spiritual things, spiritual people, you're ready to receive. You cannot receive good things unless you make the space and home for the said things. Uh, I think this relates a lot to the law of conservation of mass and algebra. In a sense, it's like you can't uh, receive a nice thing. You don't have a place to put it, like an open place to put it. You don't reserve a place to put it. And these analogies of what I have would really motivate me to start my own uh, tidying campaign. So here, the tried and tested correct order of time. Second is books, third is papers, fourth is miscellaneous, fifth is sentimental items. So if you start to go on your tidying campaign, um, to spark your joy. So no, 
rather to hone your sensor of sparking joy. Of joy, yes, hone your joy sensor. That was the word. All right, and it starts with clothing because that's the easiest to type it up. Main criteria of what to keep. When discarding, you can do the task. Ask yourself, does it spark joy in me? This is a kind of a deep question you really have to ask yourself. Some things really just don't spark joy. This is an exercise that you really have to do should you take the process. And your body will tell you if something sparks joy or not in you. Okay, for this, it is necessary to trust your intuition and with your body not your mind tells you about a certain item at hand. And usually you can trust your body or your gut instincts for this. For what to keep after um, going through everything. Now here, uh, kind of the video that started all of this for me, ready to receive. And it's really, if you want to check it out, the link is there. Steve Harvey, and he tells the story of a woman who has is having an affair with a man for a year, and yet she complains to Steve. Why are you telling me that I won't find the right man for me? And then Steve Harvey says, well, he tells the story how he had a car, had an old car, he got a job. And then he was uh, trying to be positive, like trying those um, power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. And then Steve Harvey said to his mom, hey mom, I'm gonna get a new car. And then mom said, yeah baby, but uh, you won't have no car. No, no, she said, but you got somewhere to put it, no, no the old car back in the driveway the old car so basically the story goes on to say that uh steve harvey finally removed though he was reluctant to remove this old car and almost he got the new car that he wanted that he kind of claimed for himself all right and so uh, the basic uh, point of the story is that when the woman broke up with the dude that she was having an affair with, in the very restaurant that she was always having these affairs, the maitre d' comes up there and he's like, he's all like, what would you like? You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And wow, it's amazing. It's like, at some point, you have to discard the old and unrewarding, as Peter F. Drucker would say. Moving on. Here's uh, motivation. Do you want a new house? So Mary Kondo says, I think that all houses must be connected by some kind of network. As if when you tidy your house properly, your house announces to the network that you take good care of your home. And this attracts another one to you. Countless clients have told me that once they tidied up, they found the perfect home. You want to meet a beautiful home that is just right for you. Take good care of the one you live in right now. Very spiritual kind of principle that uh, the better you do with your things, the more you have. Kind of the Pareto principle. Or what Jesus Christ actually said there. For those who have much, more will be given, and for those who have less, more will be taken from them. Even that will be taken from them. And it's the same with this, in a sense, that the better you take care of your surroundings, um, it's kind of a, if you are spiritual, you would believe that, let's say, God, or if you're a new age person, the universe would grant you uh, better things because you've proven that you were 
are capable of taking care and flourishing with said tools and item and house. All right. Next quote, long block quote, would be from James Allen. By so ennobling your present surroundings, you will rise above them and at the right time, and you will pass on into the better house and surroundings which you have all along been waiting for you and which you have fitted yourself to occupy. This really just connecting back to do you want a new house? It's best to do the tidying if your house is pretty messy and you have a lot of stuff that you don't really need anymore. We're wasting, wastefully throwing things away. It's that we are organizing the space so we can more easily find the things we need and use, and use the space more productively. So from this, you can find like one of the benefits of doing the whole tending campaign is that there is much less stress. There's no need to search for fret over lost things because everything that is essential is just there. Next is more productivity. Things are at hand. Therefore, it's not that much wasted energy. But the real big benefit, as I said, is that the stress relief from knowing where your items are and having a permanent place to put them, which is the organizing part of things. And all right, so this one is a special one. Uh, you can't make other people declutter. You can only really focus on yourself. And um, doing the tidying yourself and that others will follow suit. People won't change unless they themselves want to change. And all one can do really is be the best person they can be. Which is already really hard. So, yeah. All right. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching this, and I hope you enjoyed.